All right, Preacher here, and we are live with One Way Ministry Band. We're here to have a great night of worship, and uh, join us. You're always welcome to. Let's go ahead and do this right. Let's start off in prayer. Father God, I ask, Lord, that you, you bless this night, Lord, that you fill us with your love and your Holy Spirit. Let your truth shine through us, Father God. Reach many people out there, Lord, and just continue to guide us. Give us peace through everything we do. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's go ahead and have some worship with One Way Ministry Band.
Yeah. Well, we're going to have a quick guitar change here for the next song, and uh, it's good to be back with you all after over a year. I'm not doing a live stream. Everybody knows the last couple of years have been quite interesting, to say the least. And uh, but God's been faithful through all of it. And that's what's good about, you know, serving Jesus and having God as our Father, no matter what you're going through or facing. He truly said, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And he won't. He's right there bringing you through the storm. Whatever you're going through, he'll bring you through. He's faithful if you'll remain faithful. So uh, we're going to do a tune now called Being Ready for the End of the World. And that's a very important thing to be ready for. And uh, I think you're going to find out how to do that in just a few minutes here. All right, yeah.
That's a cool guitar. <laughs> For all of you skeptics out there, uh, this next song uh, put an end to that. God's not dead. He's very much alive and well. <laughs> He's still on the throne. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. 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 So that's what this one's called. God's not dead. Don't be afraid to share this out. You know, help get the word out. Now let's continue to praise. Thank you.
All right. Let's take a second and talk a second about about God, you know. You feel like it's too late for you? Like maybe you've done too much? Like you're lost cause? Stop and think about this for a minute. We all feel that way at one, at one point or another. And what God wants you to know is it's okay to feel that way because we all sin. We all fall short of God's glory. And it's not about what you do to be able to get you to heaven. The nice thing is, it's all about what Jesus has done for you. You see, as I said a second ago, we all sin. We all fall short of God's glory. Not one of us is worthy on our own. And so don't let the devil start getting in your head and, think, and get you thinking it's too late. You see, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. How much did he love the world? He put his love into action. He sent his only son to die on the cross for your sins. So that if you believe, you'll have everlasting life. John 3.17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come here to kick us and put us down. Because not one of us qualify on our own. But that the world through him might be saved. And that word might, it's a very important word and it always gets overlooked. The reason it says might you got a choice to make. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins? That he's the one and only Son of God? That he rose again in three days? That he's your Savior, your Messiah? If you do, you're going to heaven. That is God's promise, and you can always stand on God's promises. Now, if you don't accept that, then you're going to hell. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God through Christ Jesus is eternal life. Amen. So it balls back in your court. You know, you might say, but, but it, why would a loving God send me to hell? Well, a loving God's not sending you to hell. He paid your way. He provided for you a way out. The choice is yours. You see, hell was created for the devil and his demons. Now, would a loving God force somebody who didn't want to be with him to be with him? No, he wouldn't. That's why the choice is yours. I recommend starting a relationship with Christ Jesus today. Accepting what, what he's done for you and accepting that blessing. Anyway, let's have some more praise and worship. Be blessed.
Yeah, as Pastor was just sharing a minute ago, you need to be ready and you need to write. And uh, Jesus has already <coughs> paid the price for to do that. And um, <coughs> this next song is People Get Ready. And the way you get ready is by believing in and receiving the finished work that Jesus did at the cross. You become born again. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you will be saved. And so it all gets down to a choice, though. And that's uh, our prayer. Uh, it's been earlier this week and tonight that we're believing that many of you that have been watching this are going to come into the kingdom of God tonight. <clears throat> You're going to make that decision. You're already beginning to do it already. So uh, this next song is uh, People Get Ready. There's a train to come and you don't need any ticket. It's already been paid for. Amen. 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 All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
So Philippians 4.19 And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know, this is why the Lord is our shepherd. For we are sheep. And the awesome thing about sheep is they don't know what's for their own good. Sheep can walk into a ditch, roll over and lay upside down and not know to get up. They'll lay there and die. But the shepherd goes out and he will seek that sheep. He will clean it off, flip it back over, and point it back in the right direction and take care of them. We as people, we are sheep. We, we, we see that, that stuff that looks good, that feels good for a minute, that sin that leads to destruction. And we fall into it thinking, man, this feels great. I enjoy this. This is part of living life. I'm only young once. But that sin that feels so good for that moment is designed to destroy you. It's designed so that in the end, you don't make it. But we have a shepherd who loves us so much that, that he paid our way. He died on the cross for our sins. And he completely cares for us. You see, I, I want to read a little bit. Psalm 23 real quick. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Think about what that means. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God is providing your every need. Maybe not everything we want, you know. Too many of us want stuff we don't need. But our necessities are taken care of as a child of God. We have air, we have health, we have food, we have clothes. He'll provide us with what we need if we are following His plan. It says, He restores my soul, He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. You know, our soul without Christ is unrestored. We have a part missing, and that is God. But when we've accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. A deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. It says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That one is important. Because what does it tell us? It says, Hey, even though I walk through the valley, that means in life, we're not always on mountaintops where everything's perfect. We're going to go through rough times. But what does it promise us? It promises us that God is with us through those rough times. And in order to get to that next mountain peak, we have to go through those rough times. But God is with us. He's with us through it all. And that means we don't need to give up because God is there. He's going to give us the strength we need to keep on. And in the end... When our life is over, we are promised a perfect land and we are promised that victory in Jesus. Let Jesus be the one that guides your path today. You know, it says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you know whether or not you're dwelling in the house of the Lord forever? Let me tell you something. It's not based on what you've done. It's based on what Christ Jesus did. He died on the cross for your sins. He rose again in three days. And if you accept that, you're going to heaven. Romans 10.9 puts it really, really simple for, for me and for most people says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, anybody could confess. The devil, liars, anybody could confess. But if you truly believe, you're going to let it show in your life. You know, John 14, 15 says, that if you love the Lord, you'll keep His commands. If you truly love the Lord, show your love. By living for God today. That's what repentance is. It's to change. You're no longer living for yourself, but you're living for God. You're saved by grace. Allow God to work in your life. Start a relationship with Him today. Be blessed. And hey, let's have some more praise and worship with One Way Ministry Band right now.
of my favorite hymns. You know, complain that uh, you know so much is going wrong in our lives, and we've got all these burdens and and uh, you know, things going wrong, but yet we don't take them to God. You know, He's He's the one that that can can lift our burdens, you know, and and bear them in Himself. You know, and we don't have to go through it alone. He's there with us. That's right. No, the Bible says we have not because we ask not. Sometimes we're going through stuff. And we wonder why God allows us to go through it, but have we remembered to take what we're going through to God, you know? He, he wants us to have that relationship with Him. Yes. He's our forever friend. Amen. That's right. You know, even when we don't understand it at times, there's nothing wrong with coming before the Father and saying, God, I don't understand or know at this point why I'm going through this or, you know, whatever it is you're facing. But I trust in you. And I know that you're faithful and you've always been faithful and you're going to continue to be faithful to bring you through this as well. Nothing happens with God, you know, just to happen. You always are to learn something through whatever you go through, whether it's a great thing or, you know, you're going through a, a valley or something. But you should still come out with, uh, have learned something, not just for yourself, but even more, more importantly, for others that you'll run into down the road that are going through the same thing or similar things. And you go when you and then when you say, hey, you know what? I can understand I've been there. If you have been through that all, you really know how to God can use you to minister to people because you have been there, you know. So it's uh it's just, you know, just those times when we don't get discouraged, you know, frustrated and you know, move over from faith and continuing to trust and, and, and all of that and, to, you know, just start murmuring and complaining. And great examples are the children of Israel. <laughs> Look at what they did out there. And it cost them to be in the wilderness and all, all of that. So, you know, it's just uh, a two-week journey taking 40 years. Right. Yeah, so, you know. Yeah. Like and, uh, <laughs> of course, we read the book, Look Back, you know. Yeah. Um, we got to remember that God's in control, and that's what we tend to forget. Yeah. You know, it's like when, when Lazarus died. I, I preached on this last night. When Lazarus died, you know, Jesus said he waited two more days because he loved them. Are we willing to wait that extra time when we think we need God's help right now? But when God says, no, I'm waiting because I love you. And he worked it out where everybody would look past circ um, um, superstitions to where the Jews believed that somebody could return to the body within three days. Well, by waiting to that fourth day, Christ was able to walk up and say, hey, look, this is done by the power of God. Right. You know, and it worked out for God's glory. Yeah, yeah. Not just dead, he's good and dead. You know? Yeah, you know, he, he, so, so God's in control of everything. Well, we're going to do, uh, it's probably going to be, I guess, the last song. And uh, it's called, Are You Ready to Meet the Lord? And that topic's already been touched on a little bit, but you're going to, I'm sure, in the next few minutes, uh, Pastor Chris is going to give you another opportunity to do just that, to meet the Lord personally as your Savior and your Lord. And so, uh, you can listen to this just with your heart. Let it minister to you, the words in the song. And um, I believe it will. It will make many of you to have a decision for Christ today. All right.
how many of us realize that we got to bear with everybody? we got to bear with one another, and we're to do it with love. You know, every one of us struggle. We all have a hard time from time to time. And if we're sitting there and beating somebody else up because of their shortcomings, what good does that do? Because we ourselves have it, right? And we've been forgiven what we don't deserve to be forgiven for. So we need to show that kind of love and that kind of forgiveness and not let those those things haunt our minds, right? I want to share a little bit out of 1 Peter chapter 5. Starting at verse 5. Likewise, when you were younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. You know, when we start humbling ourselves before God and letting God's way be first in our life and letting God direct our paths, God's preparing us so he can exalt us. And not exalt us to bring glory to ourselves, but exalt us to bring glory to him, to be able to share what, the gospel is. And what's the gospel? It's the good news. It's the fact that Jesus died on the cross for you. That he paid your sins. There's nothing you can do to earn your way to heaven because Christ did it all. And this is the message that we should all be sharing. You know, we wonder as Christians what we're to do. Well, first, we need to love the Lord God with all our heart, mind, body, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. In doing that, we need to be telling them, hey, look, I fall short of God's glory. I don't deserve his grace. But because he loves me, he provided a way for me. And let me tell you something, he loves you too. And he provided your way. Let, let's read on. It says, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Do you bring everything to Jesus? Have you put everything in God's control? You know, the Bible says we have not because we ask not. And it says that we don't receive things sometimes because we ask with the wrong kind of motives. Do we ask with a heart that, that's willing to follow God's will? Or are we asking out of greed and wanting to spend things on ourselves? Allow God to move you. Allow God to work in your life. Allow God to change you. It says, be sober-minded and watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. It says, resist him. Stand firm in your faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called to you to his eternal glory, called you to his eternal glory, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. Don't lose hope when you start going through things. Don't start giving up because everything in this world is going crazy. You understand, we live in a sick and dying world. We do live in a world that is a lost cause, and God knows that. God knows that. That's why Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So that when our time here on this earth is done, when it's all said and through, we can live with God forever in eternity. This heaven and earth that we know will pass away, but there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And God wants you to be a part of that. God wants you to, to be able to turn to him for everything. You see, Jesus paid our way. You know, John 3.36 says, if you believe in the Son, that's Christ Jesus. If you believe that he died on the cross and rose again in three days. 
you shall have everlasting life. But if you believe not, then God's wrath remains upon you. You see, if you haven't accepted what Christ did, God's wrath is already upon you. That means if you were to die today, you're going to hell. And that's not God's will. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God through Christ Jesus is eternal life. Christ paid for your sins on the cross. And all you got to do is accept it. To accept what Jesus did for you. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you're carrying around a bunch of guilt and weight and stuff you can't seem to let go of, Jesus paid for it. Let it go. 1 John 1, 9 says, If you confess your sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Don't let the devil, let the memories of your past stop you from moving forward in your walk with God. You've been forgiven. You were bought with a price. The devil's wanting you to focus on that bad stuff and, and, not, and wanting you to give up. Don't give up. Romans, a little bit of Revelation 2.10, sorry says that if you're faithful, even to the point of death, you will receive a crown of everlasting life. Stay strong. Run your race in Christ. He paid your way and you are saved by grace. When you start to struggle, peace is found through Christ Jesus. You know, there's a road map for peace. And that's in Philippians chapter 4. Starting at verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord. Always, again I say, rejoice and let your reasonable be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. So, don't just come to God and beg Him, but, but rejoice. Be grateful for what you have. For the fact that you are able to turn to Him in prayer. For the fact that you've been forgiven for your sins. For the fact that you are alive and breathing. For the fact that you can trust Him to bring you through whatever it is you're going through. Give Him praise. You might say, but I have such a hard time setting my mind on that. I'm glad you said that because it's through the Holy Spirit that we can conquer this. And God gives us a roadmap for that right here. It says that when we do this and we rejoice in God and we make our requests known to Him, starting at verse 7, it says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now here's the roadmap. Here's what we need to follow. It says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is anything excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me put into practice these things, and the peace of God will be with you. You see... We're, we as Christians don't need to be walking around standing on a feeling, looking for a feeling. Oh, I feel so good. We got days where we're not going to feel good. But we can stand on the promises that God has made us. And the promises is that we fall short, we struggle, and God loves us anyway. Jesus paid for our sin on the cross, and all we got to do is trust him, to accept what he's done, and to live it daily, to believe. Our salvation is paid for. When you start to struggle, stand on these verses. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He will make your path straight. Let me tell you, God is in control of every aspect of your life. Give Him the reins. Start a relationship with Christ Jesus today. Be blessed.